Hello everyone and welcome back to Ace Attorney Investigations Miles Edgeworth. I didn't realize that I would be meeting some more blasts from the past in this episode, but I'm kind of glad I did. Maybe Larry's here. Jesus Christ, we saw a lot of heart earlier too in the beginning of this, but we weren't able to talk to her. Now, I don't know if she comes back or not, don't tell me. Um, but if that's the case, we've pretty much met everyone. I mean, the only person we're missing here is Wendy, but I think she's probably not gonna show up because we already saw Wendy in the last, like, two episodes ago, so it's fine. But we found out a couple of things. We placed a little bit together, but I think we've still got a long way to go. And now the pink princess has shown up, so we probably have to talk to her. So let's do that. Miss Pink Princess, I have a few questions I'd like to ask you. She doesn't want to say anything? Maybe like she's supposed to be incognito. What the? No, sh no! Why do I know these things? Why do I predict the future? It's her, isn't it? Oh, whoa, girl, those aren't real. What do you got, basketball stuffed in there? What in the hell? Heh, <laughs> hello, this must be what they call fate. Great. Well, this episode has everything. <laughs> Intrigue, mystery, horror, old women and basketball boobs. Well, I can't ask for more. How could this happen two days in a row? I forgot that that shit was only days ago. Oh. My god, I keep forgetting. What the- uh, Aren't you Miss Oldbag? I was gonna say, doesn't Larry know who that is? He should. Why are you so surprised? Ah, so you're the one they got to play this deal, sir, my- Oh, he was married to her for the play and didn't even know who she was under the costume. Well, serves you right, that's right. It's too bad I didn't realize that until now. You are acquaintances with Larry? Why, yes, we worked at the same company for a little while, you know. Right, I remember. That was a bit ago. <laughs> That's why it's okay. My edgy poo, you don't need to be jealous. Or... Oh. I was in the next room, you know, trying to get in some beauty sleep. But it was so noisy here that I couldn't fall asleep, so I came over to complain. So imagine my shock when I saw my precious edgy poo waiting here for me. I don't like how much of Miss Oldbag I actually am. It's a little harrowing. Maybe <laughs> I need to take a good look at myself. I mean, who could have imagined that you would ever come to a show like this? I guess I've misjudged you, Edgy Poo. You misjudged him? I thought he was trying to avoid me, you know. That was no misjudgment on your part. That's precisely what I was trying to do. But it looks like the winds have shifted and he's now willing to be chased after. I'm simply overwhelmed. Don't you worry, Edgy Poo. I'll chase you forever to the ends of the earth. Isn't that just peachy? Oh, Franzi not having it. Franzi, you know what? You could do me a huge favor and just whip the old lady. No? You probably won't go to jail. Probably. This is one of those rare times when Francisca and I actually see eye to eye. Oh, God. Okay, well, the gang's all here, isn't it? Now then, ahem, what are you doing here? I thought you were working at Gatewaterland as the Pink Badger. What are you talking about? That was ages ago! That was yesterday! Look, I worked at Global Studios before, a long time ago, right? Well, they called me this morning, kind of out of the blue, actually. They called you? Apparently, the girl who plays the Pink Princess collapsed from a bad cold. It happened so suddenly, so they called me in to be her last-minute replacement. Do they not have enough people on staff at that studio? I really couldn't say no, so here I am, playing the role of the heroine her Instead of that Mindy girl, I mean. But the poor girl, I feel bad for her. Because they let me stand in for her, she's going to have a terrible time when she returns. I'm not exactly great at reading that strange font to be a stand-in at the very last second, so I tripped over stuff, and I threw the rag doll instead, and then the audience was in an uproar, but because I tell you, they're really a bunch of simpletons. Oh, I missed some of that there. Sorry. <laughs> You're a rather lively old lady. So basically, you received the stand-in request this morning, correct? You got it. If you need to see it, I've got it right here. Look, where'd you pull it from? You know what? Don't actually don't answer that. It appears that she is telling the truth. Yeah, for once. Stand-in request. Okay. Oh boy. What luck. 
I tell you, my fine acting moved the entire audience to tears. Yeah. Yeah, I'm already there. Yes, tears of laughter, as I recall. But being famous has its problems too, you know. Take a look at this. What are we looking at? What is it? It's a letter from a stalker. What? I was just taking my break when I found this stuck under the door to my room. Wendy, I'll be descending on you from above tonight, your loving night. Ew. Who the hell would write that? Nasty. Honestly, you really have to watch out for these kind of things. Look what it says. Wendy, I'll be descending on you from above tonight, your loving night. That's disgusting. How absolutely revolting. I mean, you'd think he could get my name right. There's no accent in my name. Wait, this horrible handwriting. Where have I seen this before? Ah, uh, but now that you're here, Edgy Poo, I feel 100% safe. Eh? Uh, I... Where do I factor into this? You'd bust that evil stalker man for my sake, wouldn't you, Edgy Poo? Uh... Well, if you allow me the liberty to handle this in my own way... I'll gladly dispatch a detective to your house later. Oh, come on, Edgy Poo, stop being so dismissive and playing hard to get! Do I... do I have to? Who's... whose handwriting is that that he said he recognized? Now I can't even think. I'm sure it'll be apparent later, because... I don't know. I'm also an old person, and I forget. What were you doing at the time of the crime? What crime? What? After the show was over, I had nothing but free time on my hands. So I used the fireplace in the room next door to keep my bad hip warm. Oh. So the fireplace was used. I see. Alright. Well, a murder occurred in the room right next to yours. Is that right? Oh, Edgy Poo, I'm so scared. Hold me. Caress me. No, thank you. I don't need to file my my hands today on your sandpaper face. Get it? Because you old. Hold it. If you could please not cling on to my personage. In any case, I take it then that you failed to show up at Ambassador Alba's speech? Oh, that. No, I didn't go. I, I mean, I may have the heart of a young, tender maiden. But my body just refuses to cooperate at times. Boy, is that a mood. As soon as the show ended, my hips started acting up and got stiff. I couldn't move at all. Can you provide proof of your condition? Oh, you just go on ahead and ask the doctors in the infirmary. They're the ones who carried me from the theater all the way to this embassy. I have to admit, the thought of her not being able to leave the room is rather pleasant. Yeah, really. Okay. <gasps> a puppo. Oh, this episode just got real good. Prosecutor Von Karma, I've blocked the police dog as you requested, sir. Good work. You may leave now, officer. Little Peppo, look at him. He's so cute. This dog. I had requested the assistance of a dog in our search for the Atagarasu. There he is. Looks like you guys have some pretty bright dogs in this country, too. Look at him. He's so smart. Oh, what a good boy. Oh my god, he's beautiful. Hey, you're a real cutie, aren't you? Yeah, that's a good boy. Aw, oh, Wolverine, do you like dogs, do you? Alright, well, now you're slightly better in my eyes, okay. You just be nice to him. That's the police dog Gumshoe's been taking care of. I think its name is Missile? Oh yeah! I remember. What a fitting name for a police dog that dashes out in front and attacks. That action alone isn't exactly what's going to solve the case for us, you know. Go get him, doggy. Now, Missile, I want you to find some clues. Go! That's not exactly how it works, is it? Well, now he's running all over and peeing on it, everything. It's fine. No different from normal. What's he got there? Good dog. You really are quite bright, aren't you? Unlike a certain someone I know. Now, what do we have here? Is that a hot dog? What the fuck is that? What is this? It looks like a small hot dog, but... <laughs> God, I'm 12. Hot dog, hot dog, hot diggity dog. It's brand new day, what you waiting for? Wait, Francisco, isn't that an official samurai dog? He wants the, he wants the wiener. Look at him, he's ready to bite it. Ah, no, bad missile. He ate it. I wonder if it's all right for him to eat that. It's just a meat substance snack featuring a still samurai. I'm sure he'll be fine. That's quite a bit of information you gathered there in a single quick glance. 
We should really be focusing on why there was a samurai dog there in the first place. Well, because someone wanted to stash their hot dog in the fireplace. Why not? It looks like that snack wasn't all missile found. Oh? What do we have here? Whose t-shirt is this? It appears to be a lady's undershirt. Yeah, I was gonna say, that looks like a woman's shirt. I wonder if Ambassador Alba might have an interest in cross-dressing. Oh. Okay, <laughs> can we ask him? I would like to. I somehow doubt it. It doesn't even look like the shirt would fit him. A samurai dog and a lady's undershirt? What are these two items doing in a room like this? Given the circumstances, the lady's undershirt could only belong to one person. Oh no. Oh, I don't like it. I don't, I don't like it. I suppose I should get this over with and ask the owner of said undershirt about it. Oh, okay. Well... Wolverine, is it you? <laughs> no, it's not. It's probably Wendy's. <laughs> Damn it! Well, here we are again. Madam... I don't even want it. Oh, maybe I have to present it to her. She didn't have anything in there, did she? Ma'am, this is yours. Must I touch it? Look at this brown colored shirt! Oh, Ichipu, what is the meaning of this? What? Why did you steal that thing from my bag? All you had to do was ask and I would have gladly given you as many as you like. No, thank you, madam. Th thanks, but no thanks. This shirt was found here at the crime scene. What? Come now, why don't you just confess and explain what's doing here? I know nothing, nothing, I tell you! What? Oh, I admit that I used the fireplace to dry this shirt. Well, then you don't know nothing, do you? But I can't really help the fact that I had to, you know? Wearing the Pink Princess costume was like being in a sauna. And on top of that, I get fingered as a suspect. <laughs> oh! I read that too quickly. Oh, no. No? Mm-mm. Moving on. Are you claiming that you never once set foot inside this room? Of course I am. If I had been the one to find the body, do you think I'd be as calm as relaxed as I am? Yeah, very relaxed. I tell you, it's always like this. It's always my fault one way or another. The tablet article's missing. The camera's missing. Something's missing. Speaking of missing, my husband, when he got married, he said, Oh, I guess, the, what's the purpose of that? He should have done this, but I don't deserve it. But I can't help it. Will you marry me? Honestly, men these days. Oh my, I'm gonna need a breather after this. Uh, well... I don't believe she's lying about her actions. So I can safely assume she really was drying her shirt by the fireplace on a break. And somehow the undershirt managed to move from the next room into this one? Are the fireplaces connected by the flu? It's probably something. That can happen. I assume the samurai dog was also yours? Ah, that brilliant mind of yours. You really can see through everything about me. And so, the feeling of dread continues, but I suppose I should ask for more details. Tell me about... Your hot dog. <laughs> oh god. What is this episode? Oh man. That samurai dog was yours, wasn't it? Oh, of course I'm forever yours, my edgy witchy poo! No, that's not what I asked. If you could just stick to what I asked you. Edge, are you in like Miss Oldbag? No! You really don't change, do you? When will you learn how to take a joke? Hmm? Anyway, that samurai dog wasn't mine. Those things are a present from the studio to the embassy. A hot dog. What? A present? The studio bigwigs like, basically told us to play delivery boy. We were supposed to hand the dogs off to the embassy people and tell them hi. I had to pile them all into the pushcart just to move them all. Die, those studio guys should have delivered those things by themselves, right, Edgy? Soiks. So did you deliver the samurai dogs to the embassy staff as per your instruction? Hey! Edgy, don't just ignore me and my question! Aren't you gonna stick up for me? No. Not really. Ah, about that. See, after the show I went to rest a spell in the dressing room. Because of my bad hip, you know. And there they were. The samurai dogs were just sitting there on the dressing room floor. Ew! Not very hygienic. I suppose you had to make preparations for distributing them after the show. Well, if by preparation you mean sampling them as well. Oh, no, but there we have it. Excuse me? Oh, I tried one and thought they were actually quite good. Sorry, but I just had to find out. I know it was silly of me to think this, but I figured that since they were for a kid's show, their taste was probably for kids too. But they were so good that I couldn't stop. She's just sitting in the back eating wieners all day. 
Before I went back to my room, I had to help myself to a half a dozen or so. You ate half a dozen hot dogs. Woman! Is that what you're storing there in your booze? I mean, honestly, it's the question to ask. Look at them. As I sat there by the roaring fire, warming them and eating them, I thought, ah, uh, this is... Oh, <laughs> Francis had enough. God, Francis gives a mood. Oh, man. What is it now? Oh, I know. I bet you want a box too, don't you, my Ijibu? Is that... Is that an innuendo? No. Please. Well, who am I to say no to you? But I'll only give you one. The rest are all for me. Oh, we got a samurai dog. Wonderful. Looks like the lesson for today is that when the steel samurai and the pink princess take off their mask, they transform to a pair of annoying troublemakers. You got that right. Wonderful. Alright, um... What, we got some logic. Should, shall we look at that and see what we have? What do we have? Smoke from chimney. Smoke was pouring out of the chimney when Larry thought to climb down it. Oh, you know what? That's probably... Th these two are probably connected then. Because the other chimney that we checked said it wasn't used. So that would make me think... Here we go. Yes? Let's see what that gives us. Alright. There's no trace of this room's fireplace being used. And your point is... Ahem, smoke was supposedly pouring out of the chimney connected to the fireplace. At least, according to Larry. This is a contradiction of facts, is it not? Are you sure he wasn't just disoriented or something up on the roof? There is testimony from an investigator that puts Larry at this particular chimney. So, no, I don't think it was a mistaken impression on Larry's part. On the other hand, the fireplace in the next room was being used at the time. Where do you suppose the smoke from that fireplace went? Ah, I see. So what you're proposing is this. The smoke that came out of the chimney was actually from Miss Oldbag's fire. So basically, the fireplaces of neighboring rooms share one chimney. Is that what you're applying? Yeah, that happens. They go up small flue and then they connect in the middle. So, all right. That makes sense. Precisely. Um, undershirt from next door, shared chimney. Oh, well, then then these technically do connect because she was drying the shirt. The fireplace. Right? No? Yeah. Well, it's gotta be what it is. The lady's undershirt that Missile found. Well, oh, wait, wait, why did I get hit? What'd I do? Why are you getting all excited over holding onto a lady's undergarment? Miles Edgeworth, you uncouth sea slug. If you know the owner of said undershirt, then hurry up and return it to her already. You've it all wrong. This is evidence. And the owner of this piece of evidence was in the room next door. And yet, despite that, Missile found it in the fireplace of this room. This lady's undershirt. Are you seriously claiming that it somehow passed through a solid brick wall? No, it probably got blown up from the flu. Look, when you have fires going, right, it makes like a suction because the smoke has to go up. Right? So, you know, the air, oxygen pulls it. Pulls it outside. So maybe it got sucked up and then back down here somewhere. Not quite. The fireplace in this room is connected to a chimney. The other fireplace in the other room is also connected to the same chimney. Leading us to the possibility that two fireplaces are connected. Perhaps a closer look at the back of the fireplace is in order. Well, you might not be able to see much. You might need a camera or something. There's an X on the back of the wall in the fireplace. Let's see if I can't get a better look at it. All right. Oh. What's in the... Okay, well, that usually doesn't happen. <laughs> the wall separating this room's fireplace from the next room's fireplace. Oh, I see. Apparently turns. As I suspected, this fireplace does indeed connect to the room... Oh, well, I thought it connected... Never mind. You guys knew what I was talking about. Right? The neighboring room... There appears to be nothing particular about the next room. But the fact that there is nothing special about the next room isn't what's important. It's the fact that there is a secret passageway through the room's fireplace. Right. Okay. Well, that opens up some possibilities. Right. We now know that the fireplace connects the two rooms. But how exactly is that significant? You aren't going to suddenly name the old lady as Damask to kill her now, are you? No, she couldn't move at all because of a stiff hip. So, she could not have been the one. Unfortunately, I believe. 
that this fireplace has nothing whatsoever to do with Damas II's murder. Oh. Oh, investigation complete. Oh, shoot. Okay. Well, that's kind of bad, because usually when that happens, that means that some kind of argument's coming up, and, uh... Those usually take more than ten minutes, but we'll try to do the best we can. It would appear that the answer has made itself known. You're making quite a confident face there, Mr. Prosecutor. Bring it on. I'm ready to counter any argument you may have. Oh, it's you. Is it all right? Fine. Very well, if you're prepared. I'll show you exactly where my deductions have led me. Good. I'm counting on you, Edgy. Leave it to me, Larry. My first attack will be to expose your lie for what it really is. My, my lie? Yeah, boy. We've already been caught. Oh, my goodness. I know that there's still something you're keeping from the rest of us. What? What's wrong with you? Why is it you won't believe me no matter what I say, Edgy? Curse you. I should just hurry up and die already if that's how it's gonna be. I'll confess to every murder in the whole world, and then I'll kill myself. And throw everything into mass confusion! <laughs> you made some wonderful friends as a child, I see. Don't worry about it. You want him? Larry, I only have one thing to say to you. Even if you make that face of me, it's no use! A man who is ready to die is strong-willed, you know! Larry, it doesn't matter what sort of harebrained trouble you've caused. I only ask that you do not lie to me. If you cause an innocent person to be judged unfairly because of some insipid lie, I will never forgive you. Uh, edgy. Although, allow me to say, that I consider you to be among the innocent in this case, and that I will draw the real killer out. You can trust me on this. Alright. I... Uh, this time... This time, I'll tell you the whole truth, okay? What happened, what didn't happen, the works! Just what happened will do. Now then, if you would please testify as to what you did up on the roof tonight. Oh boy, okay. I'm worried about this because it's 22 minutes in and we've just started. So you know what I might do? Um, oh, I hate to do this, but I think we should. I do not want to stop in the middle of testimony. Um, but sometimes these are long. Hmm. Well, whatever. I had, I had like ran out of breath three times voicing old back. So in the next one... <laughs> Sorry, it's so short. In the next one, we will go ahead and get Larry's testimony and see if we can't put the truth to it and see what happens. Man, I can't believe how this is already shaping up. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am, and I will see you soon in the next one. Toodaloo!